Is everyone having an amazing time tonight? And I know that this is the moment that everyone has been waiting for, it is the National Animal Rights Hall of Fame Award. Thank you, John, for introducing me. The U.S. Hall of Fame Award in Animal Rights recognizes individuals who have made a monumental national contribution to the advancements of animal rights in the U.S. for at least the past 10 years. And candidates are nominated by an awards committee and elected by all the speakers who contribute to the Animal Rights National Conference. Current members include over 30 different individuals, including Carol Adams, Ingrid Newkirk, Peter Singer, Karen Davis, Bruce Friedrich, Jack Norris, Matt Ball, Stephen Hindy, Paul Shapiro, Nathan Runkel, John Camp, and I'm proud to say myself is included in the Hall of Fame Award. And as part of the awards committee, I am so incredibly honored to be up in front of you tonight to introduce to you this year's Hall of Fame Award winner. This winner this year started his life on an incredibly different path. As a avid sports player growing up in high school and in college, he was a very highly ranked baseball pitcher. In fact, Adidas ranked him as one of the top 100 prospects to go into the Major League Baseball. Then, something incredibly fortunate happened for animals. He injured his shoulder. <laughs> and with a severely injured shoulder, he was unable to compete competitively in baseball. So he moved to the Washington, D.C. area from Pennsylvania, and he got an internship at HSUS, the Humane Society of the United States, and he also started volunteering for Compassion Over Killing. And while his first job for animals was as a dishwasher at Sticky Fingers Bakery, as a volunteer at COK, COK recognized that this individual, this volunteer, truly needed to be part of the team on a full-time basis. So in 2003, he became a staff member at Compassion Over Killing, and immediately got engaged in working with restaurants in the Washington, D.C. area to add vegan options to their menus. And then shortly after that, while still working at COK, he became an undercover investigator employed at a chicken slaughter plant in Maryland. And the footage that he took at that slaughter plant led to national media coverage, which at the time was one of the first major exposés on the cruelties forced upon chickens, but well before our movement put a strong focus on these individual animals. He then went to HSUS along with Paul Shapiro in 2005, and he has worked with many of the biggest food retailers on the planet to implement more plant-based options, as well as crack down on some of the worst factory farming cruelties in the United States. And a few years ago, while working still for a time at HSUS, where he is still today, he also founded a little-known startup company many of you may have known as Hampton Creek. Hampton, and Hampton Creek is a startup company that is disrupting the egg industry by creating healthier, kinder, and more sustainable plant-based products, that, such as the wildly popular products some of you may know as Just Mayo. And for those of you who are sports fans, he is known closely by his friends fondly as the Walter Payton of the animal advocacy movement. And for those of you not familiar in the sports world, if you were to ask rescued chickens across the country who they can thank for their freedom, they would have one word to say, and that is bulk, 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 bulk. Please help me welcome, as the newest inductee of the National Animal Rights Hall of Fame Award, Josh Balk.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Erica, th thank you for those kind words. I would, have, I would have lost a bet if I would have put money the fact that you never utter the words water paint in your life. I'm very impressed. You know, I'm a bit uncomfortable up here because I've been surrounded by so many amazing friends who've inspired me, who are there by my side throughout every step of the way. In fact, if you turn to your left, if you turn to your right, you'll probably see people who deserve recognition for all they did to at least inspire me to achieve greater heights than I ever imagined. And I think that's part of the beauty of the animal movement, that it produces some of the most remarkable, selfless people we could ever hope to see. You know, there are people here in the room who I think would inspire us all if we knew them. You know, people who, during their free time, they take a box of leaflets, go to a college, and encourage folks to reduce their meat consumption, go vegetarian or go vegan. And we're talking about people out there, and I know many of them personally, who work full-time at a job that's a non-animal job, and sometimes it leaves them a little bit empty inside, but they do it to be able to donate for the animals. There are folks out there. There are folks, all right, yeah, let's give them a round of applause. All right. There are folks out there who I know who are armed with little more than a computer and internet access and have launched some of the most epic campaigns the world has ever known to change the policies of major corporations. We're talking about colleagues and friends who are devoting their time in state legislatures to ban the worst practices in factory farming, pass laws that are good for animals, others who are working at schools across the country to bring in plant-based foods. We might not ever know all of their names. They may never have books written about their work. They may, may never get the recognition they deserve for all the animals who they've saved. So tonight, I'm dedicating this honor to all of them. So many of us are devoting our fleeting time on Earth to do our very best to help animals. And I think we're so alike in so many ways. You know, we've had our failures, we've had our successes. There have been times when we couldn't get any lower in our life. We felt alone and lost. There have been other times where at the top of the world, nothing can ever get in our way. I think also what has happened is that we've had defining moments in our lives that have forged the path forward for us to determine what do we want to leave on the earth before we go. For me, that defining moment happened a little over a decade ago when I worked undercover at a chicken slaughterhouse about three hours from where we are today. I still remember my first day on the job. My shift was early morning, so it was before sunrise. Uh, the, rise, the ride to work was cold and dark. I parked in the lot walked into this decrepit building, found my way to the locker room, and I remember I was paralyzed with fear because there were a dozen or so workers there eating and getting changed and drinking coffee, and I swear they could see the hidden camera on me. <laughs> then the supervisor came in, motioned for us to get in the, the shackling room. We followed the supervisor in, got in a line with the rest of the workers, all in front of the conveyor belt that was about waist high, and above were the metal shackles. I heard a noise to my left. I looked, a truck pulled up, parked, and dropped an unrecognizable white mass on the belt. Then the belt started to creak and churn a little bit and started to move. Then the shackles started to swing. And I looked over again, and I saw the chickens approaching, piled on top of each other, on top of the conveyor belt, headed my way. Most of the workers on the front line shackled those chickens. But one chicken, one chicken ended up right in front of me. The supervisor came over, knowing it was my first day on the job. Grabbed the chicken 
by her legs, held her up, and showed me how to shackle her. I will never forget that chicken. Her legs were all crooked because chickens in the meat industry are genetically manipulated to grow so big, their legs often cripple beneath the weight of their bodies. Her breast was featherless and bright red because the ammonia burns from the floor of the factory farm where she was raised. So she fought as hard as she could when she was grabbed. She leaned up and pecked at his hands as hard as she could. She flapped her wings as much as she can. She struggled with every ounce of energy she had. She was so scared, and she screamed. And I remember saying underneath my breath, behind this surgical mask that I was wearing, I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. That was the moment I realized something I think many of you knew way before I did. And that was the most important thing we can be as advocates is use effectiveness as the barometer in terms of how to help the animals. Because when you see the torture we inflict on them firsthand, it underscores the reality that for them, this isn't a philosophical discussion. It's not a test on personal purity. To them, whether or not we wage effective winning campaigns, that can mean the difference of life and death. That means the absolute world to them in the real world. So, as a movement, how effective have we been? I got gun news. Just over the past decade, we've gone from no states in the country banning any factory farming practice at all to 10 states banning some of the worst, including battery cages, <laughs> veal crates, gestation crates, and foie gras. We've seen corporations have no policies at all regarding the treatment of animals. Now more than 100 of the largest food companies have policies to eliminate the worst cruelties within their supply chain, and many of them have initiatives to bring plant-based foods more forward in the public view. More than 1,000 K-12 schools, colleges, universities, hospitals are doing active meat reduction programs in their dining halls. Every single day, I think I'm seeing a new plant-based food company start. And they're getting hundreds of millions of dollars worth of funding from some of the wealthiest, most influential people in the world. Because you know what? They're seeing something you've known all along. That to fix this broken food system, we got to turn to plants. And most importantly, most importantly, right here in the United States, we are killing roughly half a billion fewer farm animals annually today than we did in 2007, in spite of the population increase. So let me ask you all, let me ask you all, are we winning? Are we winning? I think you're right, and we're making history every step of the way. We all know that we're in this movement together. We know that we're not here to make an exclusive social club. We're here to create an inclusive social movement. And what does that mean? What does that mean? That means that at the end, it's actually not about us after all. It's about her. It's about the chicken who will always be in my heart the rest of my life. It's about the billions of animals just like her. I am honored to have played a small role in our movement's progress, and I'm excited to join you in all of our victories to come in the years and years down the line. The animals can't do it themselves. It's up to us, and I know we're not going to let them down. Thank you all so much.